All right, let's get started. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Webinar Wednesday. Now, I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker, Charles Cantu, CEO and founder of Reset Digital. So Charles is a 20-year media veteran and entrepreneur who has worked for the likes of Disney, Comcast, MediaMath, and others, as well as built and sold businesses in the digital space throughout his 20-plus year career. After selling two programmatic businesses in 2018, Charles built Reset Digital to restore trust through deep log level truth for, for the digital industry. Today, Reset Digital leads the world in next generation neurocognitive marketing technology, which they call neuroprogrammatic. In his spare time, Charles is a keynote speaker and serves as a resident technology expert for MASB, Marketing Accountability Standards Board, Digital Accountability Committee, and he's the featured host of the Association of National Advertisers Marketing Futures podcast, where he leads industry through a combination of curated topics with industry leaders and innovators. So without further ado, I'm pleased to turn over to Charles Cantu. Well, hello, everybody. Honored to be here, privileged to be here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And while I'm doing that, um, what I'd like to do is maybe play a quick video for you first and then jump into kind of what all this means. Um, actually, Are you certain your ads resonate with consumers? Reset Digital improves consumer response. We determine who your ideal audience is, which ads have the highest emotional relevance in relation to them, and exactly when and where to serve your creative to optimize for measurably better results. Using machine learning, we unlock the hidden motivations embedded within your creative and predictively match them with content and programs that naturally trigger an emotional fit and match. This way, we deliver relevancy, resonance, and suitability with your audience with certainty and improve response rates measurably. Across all channels, Reset Digital gives you complete control over the programmatic process. Choose only the tools you think you need or enjoy the full suite with Reset Digital's neurocognitive marketing platform. Reset Digital. Certainty by people you can trust. Well, all right. So uh, let me just jump over to our presentation. All right. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to flip through a few slides here. Um, I do want to start with kind of the backstory of Reset Digital. Um, about three years ago, I sold a couple of programmatic companies. One was a trading desk and the other was a supply side platform. And um, I had built that supply side platform after spinning out of Media Math um, because no one, Media Math, Google, New York Times could answer why I was seeing price discrepancy. And it was quite maddening for me. So being the technologist and tinkerer that I am, I built an SSP. Matter of fact, I built three versions of the same SSP until I was happy with it. Um, that having been said, while I was exiting those businesses, um, a guy named Tony Pace, who was the chairman of the ANA, Association of National Advertisers, came to me and uh, introduced by Mike Donahue, who's on the call today, and said, could you re-engineer the ecosystem so that it benefits marketers first. My response to that was that it was business rules, not necessarily the technology, but yes, we could. We got our name from Tony Pace, the promise of programmatic realized. Um, and then we added the power of cognitive messaging unleashed. In regard to the promise of programmatic realize, we essentially have engineered the entire ecosystem. We're a mini Google. Um, we're diverse, diverse owned, so you can call us a black hole. We've got our own DSP, our own ad server, DCO capability, our own 
header bidder and we call it a BSP. We connect to other SSPs, BSP being a buyer supplier platform, which means that you can curate all of your supply directly. So when ISBA and WFA and the ANA say they don't know where 30% of your media spend is going, we solve for that. Um, you can create your own app store and probably most important to most marketers today for many different reasons, including GDPR and CCPA and all of these data governance issues is that we're a SaaS company. We actually put our technology on your servers. Uh, if you are so inclined, which means that you eliminate data leakage. That also means that you don't have to ask anybody for your log files. They're your log files. It's your data. Then you get into what you can do. You can create your own walled garden. And I would say this is our core, right? So you essentially can curate your own network. So if it, we have a client, um, Inspire Media, who is a pharma media company that literally white labels our DSP. They sell self-service uh, DSP services to holding companies and agencies because they have their own secret sauce in regard to the data that they have. Um, and what's nice about that for them is there's no data leakage. They don't have to worry about whether they're going to expose their audiences and be pirated. Um, in the case of uh, the world's, uh, that we know, the world's largest independent agency, Horizon Media, same, same, different. What they're really honing in on is cost savings end to end. Um, and then we get into the neuroprogrammatic pieces. And the video that you just watched kind of touches on the tech stack itself but adds a layer of what we call neuro validation and what we're able to do. And I'll get into demoing for a moment. What we're able to do is come in, take creative and ingest it for what we call Maslow's motivations, uh, which we expand to 15, uh, as well as self-determination theory need states, which most people in media have heard about. Um, they just have never been able to ingest creative and or content to be, to be able to deliver and speak to those audiences in a way that's a fit and match. We start with, before we even get started, we actually start with over 7,000 television programs here in the U.S. This can be done for anything. We see all content as stimulus. So on a cognitive level, the programming that you're in, the application that you're on your phone with or your tablet, the television programming, the connected TV, whatever the thing is, the web page, we ingest all of that as stimulus. And like a grape shot where they actually tag everything for context, which we do as well, um, we move beyond standard context, right? So this is a cookie list solution. That context being for, again, these motivations and need states. Now, when Proctor came to us, they introduced us to a guy named Zoe Wesson, and his name will come up a little bit later again. When Zoe uh, came to us with his scripts that they wanted to uh, publish one of them on TV One, Mark Pritchard said, well, which one should we produce? And the answer ultimately ended up being push play because it was a fit and match for that particular network based on these motivations, right? That index anything over 20% is good. And then the self-determination theory need states. What they then sent us was additional creative that we could actually ingest, tag, and do the same thing for. And we've done this time and time again. The answer was, when you look at these creative, you can start to see fit and match and also deltas. Now, let's go back, actually, before I do that. We look at resonance score as a proxy for relevance to the individual, right? So we take our, we've got eight patents underlying in neuroprogrammatic. Those eight patents drive these resonance scores. And then they get into a means of where is the fit and match based on programming, based on CTV, based on network, and quite frankly, based on the websites that we semantically scan. In the US, we have 
just under 300 million uh, folks tagged. Uh, and we can do the same anywhere in the world. We actually just launched uh, Reset Digital Africa um, this week. But as a, what's interesting is we took a trillion dollar study that was done across CPG and we leveraged what the ARF did, uh, the American Research uh, Foundation. And we use that as a proxy to model um, if we have the actual data, we can actually come up with act real numbers. But if we look at taking some of our recommendations, and especially with Proctor, you get into a situation where you can start to move even 1% means hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of sales lift. The affinity increase both from, let's just say, moving brand preference as well as brand purchase um are in the, about the same range we we tend to hit about a 30 to 37 percent lift in either category time and time again so then what do we do actually i'm gonna start here <clears throat> Now, for the folks that may be creatives on the line, this gets really interesting uh, in regard to how we look at the world. So what we noticed is when we started speaking to agencies, especially uh, media folks, this was just a different way of for them to look at um, the industry and how to procure media. Um, what we realized is we are definitely different. We reached back out to Zoe Wesson and said, listen, not a lot of people are creating creative based on everyone as a human being. Call that, you know, universal inclusivity. Forget DNI for a minute and let's just look at the world as we are all human. We all have a vertebrae. Uh, we all have a limbic system and then we got a brain and they kind of optimize the same way. Now we bring in anthropological context to the equation. We bring in kind of all of our history. We call that a generative imprint. That generative imprint means your immediate system, your immediate family, your parents, your grandparents, your lineage, your neighborhood. All that comes to the equation when you make a decision. And quite frankly, most of that is happening subconsciously. <clears throat> what we're looking at is bringing these key cognitive insights based on your stimulus creative and based on where you want to place it and matching all those people so that you can influence them. So that's what our system is doing. We're actually ingesting your creative and then we're giving you keys in regard to what's gonna fire in the brain. Now, what does that really mean? What's the output? How do we get this thing? What do we, how do we create a plan? You know, all that good stuff. Um, with one of our clients, um, we took in all their creative past first and then, and then we moved into the future. So let me give you kind of a, a look back. They sent us creatives and they didn't, what I find interesting about creatives is they have what I would call a innate genius in them, right? That they don't necessarily know why what they do works all the time. They know how they do it but they kind of sometimes miss on why is this going to be a good creative or not? What we're able to tell them is, you know, this particular creative resonated for people that are into service to humanity, self-knowledge and the good life. Um, what they had no idea is their top performing creative crossed over so many categories. It made sense when their media plan executed against you know many many websites yeah of course it was going to do well because it resonates with all kinds of people but when you get into creatives that only have three or in this instance two it you really have to be laser focused in regard to who you're going to reach in what environments so call that the empathetic effect call that the context effect call it whatever you want but at the end of the day there, there should be a fit and match. Now, so what does that mean, right? It means that 
mind the gap. If you're going to create creatives or you're going to deploy a media plan and your client has given you a brief of whatever it is, women 25, 54, men 35 to 49, doesn't really matter. They're all human. Some men gravitate towards belonging and security, others love, some leadership, others achievement, and same thing for women. We're all human, right? And the, you guys probably know this better than anybody else, the demographics that most people start with, and this doesn't mean don't use your demographics, but it certainly means they were invented in the 1700s. And a guy named John Grant in, in England actually came up with that. Stuff was a little bit biased and it was a little bit off. So it's about time for an update. And that's essentially what we're bringing to the table here is just the ability to look at, you know, what creative is coming in, how to make sure that that performs better, uh, as well as give you the tools and rules to obfuscate all the fraud and all the junk that's happening and excessive arbitrage and take control of your media plans and your creative. I'll pause there. Are you um, ready for Q and A? I am. Oh, fantastic. All right, so we've had one question through um, from Fran in Spain. Um, I'm not sure if he wants to ask himself, so I'll just ask for him. He said, uh, what is your opinion on the technology being offered by Canadian programmatic advertising company? Um, Ac Ac I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. Acuity Ads. I'm not familiar. Well, you know what? I know of them. I'm not super familiar um, with them. What I can say is what I know about the Canadian market because I launched it for Media Math and helped build it out is that their publishers tend to maintain a lot of control of that ecosystem. They seem to be very sophisticated, both in Montreal and Toronto and across the country. I don't think they're as plagued as the rest of the world, but they certainly have their own challenges. What they're not uh, doing, quite frankly, is um, they're not deploying neurocognitive uh, messaging for certain. And, you know, the last, my last experience with the Canadian market was with one of their media companies who was leveraging one of our white label clients um, who had, let's say, told the world that they had technology and did not have any and then ultimately ended up coming to us. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, the whole world is dealing with a lot of that, right? A lot of people saying that they have technology that's built on someone else's that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world if you are being told the truth and you understand what's happening with the margins. Um, probably more importantly is that you can mitigate the fraud that is happening in the ecosystem, which none of those technology companies can actually do yet. Fantastic, thank you. Um, another question from the audience. Someone has said, uh, that you mentioned that you've just launched in Africa. Are you able to work across all markets or are there specific ones of focus? We started in South Africa, uh, mainly because one of our clients had uh, introduced us to Gray, who then uh, introduced us to Zaxis, who then introduced us and we found a value-added reseller uh, who could represent us there. So we're literally loading our technology on South African servers now. Um, and the truth is we can deploy across the entire continent. Um, if I was to do that, or I should say, when we do that, we'll probably go next to, to Nigeria, then Ghana, then Kenya. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so another question from the audience is what you're developing going to replace media agencies or will it work alongside them? Yeah. So, so first it's developed. Um, not developing. And second, um, it's not meant to replace. So what this does is it teases out the genius in the human beings. I'm, I'm not a believer that technology should ever <laughs> replace human beings other than, you know, things like computational maths that um, they're just suited for. There's an inherent um, 
situational awareness and genius that human beings have, meaning that the most sophisticated AI at Google or IBM or, or wherever you want to look to um, doesn't have the situational awareness of my five-year-old son. So no matter how brilliant they get, they still need us. And therefore we would be foolish to put them in control. There's all kinds of issues that have come from that. And, you know, I am on the other side of that where I think we can solve the problems together as a global community, as opposed to leave it up to the machines. That's, you have to have Oracle, you have to have people and communities overseeing the code base. Thanks. Um, so we've had um, another question. So someone has said, uh, what do you think is the most important benefit to marketing clients? Is it transparency or cost efficiency? Well, I think transparency changes the perception of cost efficiency because when you really buy true human impressions, viewable impressions, in general, your perceived CPM is going to go up because that fraud is eliminated and that fraud is really cheap. It's perceptually cheap. So that's going to change the way things look for you. Um, the benefit I think is probably most importantly is going to be the performance. When you reach human beings, they can take an action. When you reach a bot, they can take an action, but they're going to do a quick refund or they're going to game you. So, you know, there's a inherent dual cost, so to speak, when you buy the wrong things. That's, that's fair. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, someone else has asked, um, is there a roadmap and time scale to bring the program to the UK? We are currently working with the, the Network One in regard to procuring a value added reseller in the market that we will partner with. Um, so we're looking to do that actually now. Great. It's exciting. Uh, another question, uh, does the system help to originate creativity or to improve and optimize existing creative content? I don't know that we improve creative content. We simply tell the creative, uh, the creatives, the creative geniuses, um, what it is about their creative or their specific creative that is going to work with certain types of people. We also can tell them, you know, what's missing. So if they want to create new creative, who they should focus on and how they should focus, what kinds of language they can use, what kind of body language they want to apply. We're, we're simply filling in the gaps, right? When it comes to most geniuses, I'll give an example of Greg Luganis. He was once asked, you know, how does he do what he does because he won so many diving um, gold medals. And he said he, he went up to the top of the platform and then um, he would, at the edge of the pools, there were jets flowing in to keep ripples on the pool so that you can see your entry point. And he said he would listen for the jets. That specifically was the difference that made the difference. And the coach that actually learned that insight and started teaching others how to do that was the difference that made the difference. We're essentially trying to help media procurement folks, uh, advertisers, marketers, agencies, as well as creatives, the difference that makes the difference in these campaigns. Mm, absolutely. Thanks. Um, so someone else has asked, um, do you think that this technology will lead to more in-housing of traditional agency services? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So the answer is, I think everything is cyclical, right? I've been around long enough to know that. Um, marketers may try to in-house. Um, in the case of Proctor and others, um, the truth is, Agencies are a requirement. They're not internally equipped to do all the hard work. Um, when you when you talk to, I've talked to several major brands. One of the common things that comes up is, well, this is this is extra work. This is a lot of work. We're going to have to do more. Well, yeah. And so generally, we push them back to the agency 
because I know that they don't want to do that work, right? Everyone wants to start work late, take a long lunch and go home early and spend time with their kids or their families, right? So at the end of the day, it's best suited to have an agent that's going to have your best intentions. And quite frankly, it's not a tech company. It's not necessarily, you know, trade desk or me. Um, now I have 20 years in media, but most technology companies don't have a lot of experience in media and advertising. So it's better to be with an agency that understands the full gambit of what's happening. Mm. Great, thank you. Um, another question, um, are there any markets that are problematic for your tech? Well, I think that if, you know, if we're talking about China, then, you know, we're going to have to re-engineer that two different ways in regard to the NLP, natural language processing, algorithms. So that's going to be a challenge. Um, you know, we're starting in English first uh, markets, including South Africa, for that matter. Um, but it can be version for any language. I just think that that's going to be the most nuanced language to tackle. And so we probably won't start there. Fair enough. Um, I've actually got quite a few questions. Uh, so another one, um, are clients like Procter & Gamble, who you mentioned before, investing in your company or are they potential clients? They are clients. Uh, they are not investing in our company. Most um, investors would frown upon having Procter A as a client, but also as an investor. They tend to um, you know, grow you fast and also leave you just as fast. So. It's, it's not always a good thing to have them as a client. Mm. Great. Um, so someone else has said, um, it seems that this approach will force brands to understand their target groups even more in terms of their psychographics and emotional needs, and then to brief the creatives more specifically about what inspires the target group. Where do they start to understand their target groups? How can you support and enable clients to understand their target groups better? Well, let's, let's start from, let's say a client that is sophisticated enough to have their own client data platform, their own CDP, and they're matched to a DMP and or an agency that's sophisticated that like has their own CDP and, and DMP. Those data sets is where I would start. Um, I would make sure that we clean those data sets out, right? Because the same people that perpetuated issues in technology and programmatic in general, sold those companies and went to data companies. So there's certainly uh, fraudulent data in a lot of people's systems. So, you know, purging that to begin with, so getting a clean data set, and then you can easily model what, what we do is we easily just sync our data and model that on a non PII basis to others. Right. So Thank you. You can do that. And then and then there's always the old panels, right? A lot of people do a lot of panels and then EEG work and, and MRI work based on the cognitive stuff as well. The, the challenge with those panels is that it doesn't necessarily cross over. So but I think a combination is always good. Great. Um, someone has asked, who is your partner in South Africa? Is that something you can tell us? We've we've named the company uh, Reset Digital Africa. And um, the partner is, and I'm gonna, I'm forgetting their name, Fanbase was the name of the company. Great, thank you. Um, another question, uh, do you see e-commerce clients like Amazon or traditional retailers now selling online as adopters of your technology or are they developing their own? So my, my old boss at Media Math now runs product for Amazon. So I will say they haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by design and on purpose, um, because I'm not ready, they, they, they will, um, I, I, my fear is that they will make an offer too soon. So, so no, um, same thing with Google and, and Trade Desk. I've been very careful about um, how to work with others. Um, and so, no, not yet. We have shared it with Walmart. Um, so someone has said, um, I could be missing a key point here, almost certainly, but what is the difference here from what System 1 offers? Uh, I don't know. System 1, can someone tell me what, who, what they are exactly? Um, the person who asked the question, their mic isn't working. Mm. Um, sorry. 
it's all so right. this, this might be a, a bit of a, a dead end. Um, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if they're going to say something in the chat. Um, maybe they can, I'll, I'll show you my address and maybe they can email you afterwards about that. Okay. Um, so I think that that is it for, oh, we've, sorry, we've got one more question that just come through. Um, so is uh, anyone in this or in the audience, um, someone has asked if anyone else is using this kind of technology um, and uh, have you guys in the audience, um, well, you know, had any, had any reactions to it? Um, do you have any opinions on it? So I don't think anyone in the audience, no, um, and I know other than Mike Donahue, there was going to be one network, one member on the call today, but he was, he fell ill. So, um, That's also okay. media has used it, um, in the network, but he's the only one that I know of. So I think that's actually um, all the questions we've had. We've had quite a few, so that's great. And thank you so much for your um, fantastic session as well. So I'm now going to share your um, details on the screen. Hold on, bear with me for one moment. Um, so there might be some people that, um, you know, didn't want to share their question with the entire group, which is fair enough. So if you would like to contact Charles directly, you can email him at charles at resetdigital.co. Um, and you can visit the website to find out more, which is resetdigital.co. So I just want to give a really big thank you to Charles Cantu for that fantastic webinar. Um, as I mentioned, please feel free to contact Charles either with a question or just for more information about what they offer and things like that. Uh, so thank you guys all for coming. We really hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we will be holding Webinar Wednesdays once a month. So future Webinar Wednesdays can be found on our website under events at www.thenetworkone.com forward slash webinars. And if you visit that page, you can also find past recordings, previous webinars, and this recording will be there in a few days. Um, if you'd like to be the first to know about upcoming webinars, please email me at stephanie.fox, that's S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E dot fox at the network one dot com to be added to our mailing list. And then you'll be the first to know when we've got a new webinar to sign up for. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We really hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. Um, so I hope you all have a great day. Speak to you soon. Bye.